Yo, what is up everybody? I'm FUTC and welcome back to a new video. I was recently creating a calendar with my best photos of 2022. I do this every year as a gift for relatives. I just pick a bunch of my favorite photos I've taken over the year and make them into a calendar for the following year, which I then give to relatives on Christmas or sometimes after Christmas or sometimes even after New Year's because I either forgot to do it in time or I forgot to ship them in time. But this time I actually got it done before Christmas and before the New Year started. So that gave me the idea of making this video where I show my best and worst photos of 2022. I should be working on a research paper right now but I would rather procrastinate that and work on this video instead because I feel like I work better under the pressure of impossible deadlines anyways. I don't have the exact number but I believe I took somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 to 30,000 photos this year on a plethora of different cameras. Do I have an addiction to buying more gear? No. Will I stop buying more gear? Well I like totally could if I wanted to but I don't want to so... I'm just gonna go in chronological order through the year and for all of the images I show I will annotate which gear I used for that photo. Okay enough babbling around, I have so many photos and I am big headed enough to think that you might want to see them, so <laughs> let's go. In the beginning of the year I didn't do much photography because I was super busy with university stuff during that time. That's the fun thing about university, they will make you work without pay and then call it your semester project. I took some photos of drinks that I made and I did some analog photography, these photos really aren't anything special but they are the only photos I can show for the first few months of the year. The first proper photography outing was in April. I visited family over Easter in Hamburg and brought the Leica R7 with a 28mm lens and a couple of rolls of film. Many of the photos I took on this trip are fine, but a few turned out so bad. This video contains my best and worst photos of 2022, and these are my worst. I scanned these myself and they just turned out horrible. That is partly due to my scanning setup being so janky that simply looking at it the wrong way will make it fall over. The scans aren't really in focus. But it's also partly due to one of the rolls having a weird color cast. Maybe it wasn't stored properly, I don't know. But I also don't know what I was thinking with this shot here, I don't even have an excuse for this. Heading into this year, I was still very hyped about analog photography. In 2021, I fell in love with film photography and that carried over into 2022, but this trip was a turning point. I wrote a whole blog post where I go into more detail on this, I will link it in the description down below, but here is the TLDR. I put a lot of time, effort and money into analog photography, and then having the photos not turn out at all as I had envisioned them really annoyed me. Mostly because I knew if I had just taken my mirrorless camera camera with me on this trip, I would have taken 10 times better photos. Okay, please don't stop watching the video yet, okay? I, I swear I have some good photos coming. Me being fed up with analog photography ultimately led into me buying the Fujifilm X-T30 in May, which I have a full video on. I had just started my new job and spent my first paycheck on this camera. Yeah, I shouldn't be allowed to handle money. But after I got it, I spent so much time shooting with it and trying out different film simulations, I was having an absolute blast. I also took it to the Netherlands for a couple of days to shoot film simulations with vintage lenses. I also have a full video about this trip. I think just in the first three weeks of owning the X-T30, I took well over 5,000 photos with it. One of the best things the X-T30 did for my photography was it made me fall in love with street photography. In June I visited two abandoned industrial complexes that have been converted into heritage sites for museums and culture and I as a man of culture myself totally went to look at the art. I did a bunch of architecture and street photography there. Some of these images are taken on the X-T30 but I also took a bunch with my Sony a7R2 and the Tamron 7D to 300. That made me realize a telephoto lens is freaking awesome for street photography. I also realized how awesome harsh midday light is for super contrasty black and white. A 
couple days after that, I brought the Fujifilm X-T30 to a Japanese garden to create some super vibrant golden images. I am very pleased with these photos. I definitely think they are some of the best I took this year. In June, I also tried some wildlife photography with mediocre success. The best photo I got was this silhouetted bird sitting on a branch, tilting its head. This was taken with my friend's 200 to 600 mm lens. I got this image after chasing this woodpecker for a decent hour, but unfortunately her face is slightly covered by leaves. I am saying her face with a very big asterisk, because I'm only somewhat sure it's a female. And I'm scared of hobby ornithologists in my comments. The next day, I spent another two hours trying to catch a good photo of a woodpecker, but when he finally decided to sit close to me, he did so in an angle that made this stupid little twig cover his face. Yes, this time I said he, because of that little red spot on his head. Even birds have a punk face, as you can see. These images are pretty good in my eyes, but compared to the work of actual wildlife photographers, these are absolute amateur hour. I have mad respect for the patience and skill wildlife photographers have. The last photos in June were some simple black and white architecture shots around my university with the X-T30. Yes, the month of May and June were absolutely packed with photography, but wait until you see July. Just a quick interruption here, I don't have any sponsors or anything for this video, so if you enjoyed them, it would be really nice if you could leave a comment down below, like this video, or even subscribe to the channel. Okay, let's continue. In July, I spent three weeks in the Swiss Alps, which is one of my favorite places to be. I have been in Switzerland very often already, but I always enjoy the crap out of it. First, we spent two days in Basel and did some street photography. After that, we headed into the French-speaking part of the Swiss Alps near a town called Les Diableries. The first day we had some very nice moody and cloudy conditions, which is like S-tier weather in the mountains for photography, but unfortunately this was the first and last time for the whole trip that we had conditions like that. Calling the view from our cabin here phenomenal is an understatement. I literally couldn't stop taking photos of this mountain range. I have way too many photos of it. The rest of the trip yielded some very very sunny and dry weather, which was a mixed bag. On the one hand, sunny weather is a lot better for hiking than pouring rain. But at an elevation of 1500 to 2500 meters, the sun is also super strong at this time of the year. Meaning, on every hike I was always melting like when you forget to drink your coke from McDonald's fast enough and all of the ice cubes already dissolved and then you're just drinking watery coke at that point. Additionally, most of our hikes were done in midday light, and with the harsh sun, it's almost impossible to take pleasing images with that amount of atmospheric haze. The flip side to all of that was, every night we were having gorgeous sunsets. And the conditions were perfect for some astrophotography. Here are two images that are each stacks of 10 to 15 images. I also tried to get a close-up of the moon properly for the first time and was pleasantly surprised. Purely by chance, we found out that the doping world championship, uh, I, I mean the Tour de France, was passing through the town we were staying at. It was really cool to see this in real life, but also pretty underwhelming, because in the end it's just four groups of sweaty dudes cycling past you in 30 seconds and then it's over. Now of course, these people are literally performing at the absolute maximum the human species can perform at, but you just don't see much of it as a bystander. I got one image of the riders I am quite happy with, but my favorite image from this event is this one I took of the TV helicopter while it was just a couple of meters above us. After 10 days here, we headed to our next day in a very small ski town called Belle Alpe, which is located 2100 meters above sea level. And the scenery up here was simply stunning. A couple hundred meters from the apartment we were renting, there was this epic valley between these alpine peaks with several streams of water forming into a river, and every evening we had the best sunset lighting you could wish for.
August was about the time when I decided that I wanted to have no more free time in my life ever. I mean, do more frequent videos about photography. It started with the Nikon D2X review, which I filmed in the same industrial park I was at in June. Buying this camera was such an impulse purchase. The best part of being a grown-up is that you can buy things you want. The worst part about being a grown-up is realizing you can't afford to pay your electricity bill because you've spent your money on the sweetest camera 2005 had to offer. Okay, in my defense it was really cheap. But this camera is so freaking cool, there's just something about this camera that makes it way more fun than it should be. And the image quality out of this thing is no joke, even though it's close to 18 years old. I only have 4 images for September, 2 from my 85 f1.8 review and 2 more from my Fuji X-E1 review where I took it to a fair. August and September only had a very small amount of photography in them and that was mostly due to me trying not to die from struggling to balance my sudden urge to make YouTube videos, writing exams and my actual job and yeah I was really struggling with that but I somehow passed all of my finals so yeah I guess it kind of worked. In October, I brought the Fujifilm X-Pro1 to visit my family. Well, I, I didn't bring it specifically to visit my family. I visited my family and then I happened to bring the X-Pro1 along, you know? <laughs> I'm really happy with the images I took with the X-Pro1 on that weekend and I'm generally really pleased with that video. So definitely check that one out once you're finished with this one if you haven't seen it yet. As for all of the images that belong to videos I've made, you can go watch those if you want more context or background on the photos. Also here are two more photos I really like from a little day trip I did with my girlfriend sometime in October. In October I also made my Canon FD 50mm f1.4 review which is my favorite vintage lens of all time. Unfortunately that video has done very poorly so I don't know maybe show it some love if you're interested. Here is my favorite photo from that video I took it of one of my best friends. In the end of October I made my Fujifilm GFX 50R review where I went to take photos of fancy cars. Automotive photography is definitely one of my favorite types of photography. A month after I was in Hamburg the last time, I went again. Yeah, I went three times this year, but it was also really nice to see my relatives more frequently after I had not seen them for a long time during the pandemic. With the X-T30 around my neck, a dream in my mind, and a substantial sugar rush from an Oreo donut I ate right before, I took three photos during blue hour that I am very pleased with. I took this photo while we were rushing to get to the train and I just quickly stopped to snap this. Somehow the lighting, the composition, everything just lined up while I was literally jogging to get to the train in time. The last video I released was the video essay about the Leica S2, which is a video I am super proud of and put so many hours into making. My favorite photo from that video is this one. The weekend after filming that video I went to Rotterdam to watch the Rocket League Fall Major Tournament, that's esports nerd stuff for you normal people. This weekend was such a cool experience, I took a couple of photos here because I brought the X-T30 but to be honest I barely took it out. I think my favorite photo from this month isn't even one I took myself, it's one my friend took of me together with the pro player Arsenal because sometimes it's not about the photos but all of the trips, friends and memories you make along the way. Yes, that is a very cliche thing to say but in my defense I might also have brain damage from watching 15 hours of Rocket League over the span of two days. Also, it's literally 2.24 a.m. right now. Thank you everybody so much for watching this video to the end and supporting this channel. I've almost hit 2,100 subscribers as of recording and man, I, I, I'm really happy that I've come this far in the past few months of taking YouTube more seriously and I can't wait what 2023 brings. I've made some investments, yeah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I've bought another camera <laughs> and uh, yeah, you're gonna see a video about that soon and yeah, I'm really excited. I've got a bunch of video ideas in my head that are ready to go and yeah, here's to 2023 and yeah, I'm really excited. As we Germans say, I hope you slide well into the new year and I hope to see you in the next video again. Bye-bye.